What's up, guys? Thomas Mott here. Welcome into the Thomas Mott Show on a Football Friday. Yes, we are a couple days away from a Monday nighter where Philadelphia is going to take on the Minnesota Vikings. We want to jump into that game. Quick note here. The Vikings are afraid of Philadelphia. At least Viking fans and Viking blog writers, they're very scared. Like, I feel like Eagle fans and Eagle blog writers are like, oh my gosh, the Vikings, they're pretty scary. This could be a really tough game. The Vikings feel the same way, and that should at least give you a little bit of peace going into the Monday Nighter against the Minnesota Vikings. We'll dive into that. We'll also look at some of the other games in our national story uh, coming up here in Week 2. First, though, I need to make an announcement. I want to bring you guys in on what is happening over the next couple of days here. I am going out of the country. I am going to Norway. Way when you, by the time you're watching this video, which is coming out on Friday, I will be on a plane flying to Norway. And so I'm going with a couple buddies of mine. We'll be gone for a week. And so not only will I not be in my home studio here, which you guys see behind me with all this great lighting and gear and the lights above and stuff like that, I'm not bringing like any of my big camera equipment. I have one little backpack. We're doing a lot of backpacking. And so I can't really bring a tripod and a camera and a microphone. I will have this though my cell phone. And so I will be going ahead and trying to film videos and give you guys shows going up next week. I'm going to be watching the Eagles game at 2 a.m. Uh, in Norway because of the time difference. And so that's Monday night, so six hours ahead. And so I will be watching. I'm going to try and make as many videos and many shows as possible, but I want to give you guys a heads up that I will be out of town. And so if the Thomas Mott show is not every single day, that will be the reason why. My big problem is going to be Wi-Fi. I have no idea if the Wi-Fi is going to be good or not from where we're going to be staying. We're going up to the Arctic Circle, top of Norway. We're going to the other side of Norway on the west coast doing a lot of fun hiking a lot of fun trips so gonna be gone for a week but don't worry I'm gonna try to get as much content up as possible and I will like I said be watching the Eagles from Norway at 2 a.m. I'm gonna stay up and watch the whole thing because obviously uh, I'm a huge Eagles fan so I gotta watch the game regardless so that's just a quick little heads up this will be the last video for a week from the home studio, but we're going to try to go and give you guys some Thomas Mott shows uh, from Norway, which I don't know if anyone's ever done that before on YouTube, so that could be kind of fun. All right, I digress. We'll move on from my uh, you know personal travels and get into what is going on with the Vikings and the Eagles. The Vikings are afraid. I think the Vikings should be afraid because a lot of the national media, if you watch ESPN the past couple of days, they're raving about the Vikings. I mean, literally, it's like the Vikings are the greatest team of all time. Go back and watch the Packer film. That game was way more bad Packers and good Justin Jefferson versus bad, you know, you know, good Packers and good Vikings. It was Justin Jefferson and the Packers stinking, and that was it. There's a great write-up here. We'll throw it up on your screen from the Viking Gage uh, or Viking vikingage.com that gives you kind of four biggest problems for the Vikings must fix before week two versus the Eagles and this is a great example of the Minnesota Viking fan base like the blog writers here Adam Patrick understanding that Minnesota is not invincible and that this is a really big matchup here in week two let's take a look at all four and break them down so first one Pressure allowed by the interior offensive line. So even though the Vikings have a brand new coaching staff, the same problem from last few years still made an appearance in the team's regular season opener last week. Minnesota's interior offensive line, led by center Garrett Bradbury, had struggles uh, has struggled in pass protection the last few years, few years, and that continued last weekend against the Packers. Scroll down here. In Week Two, Minnesota's interior offensive line will be going up against an Eagles pass rush that generated 14 pressures against the Lions last week. Philadelphia is, is probably licking their chops at the thought of facing Bradbury and Ingram. So the Vikings need to come up with a plan before next Monday to eliminate the impact of any pressure that their interior offensive line gives up. Every team has a weakness, especially in the NFC. This is Minnesota's. Their interior offensive line is not that good. They're good at run blocking. They're good at creating holes for Dalvin Cook. But when it comes to pass blocking, Philadelphia should be able to get pressure. Now, the concern for Philadelphia is, yes, they had 14 pressures last week, but not a lot of impact on Jared Goff's throws. Like, there really wasn't a lot of bodies, you know, hanging off of, flying around, and getting close to Jared Goff. The one sack was due to a fumble. So this is a very big matchup to watch for coming up on Monday night. If the Eagles' pass rush dominates the interior offensive line of the Vikings, this will be a Philadelphia Eagles win, and they're rightly concerned about that because the Eagles' defensive line, albeit whatever happened last week, should be really, really good this year. Okay, problem number two, according to uh, the website here, how about stopping the run? And this is interesting because Green Bay actually was very, very good in terms of rushing against the Minnesota Vikings. And as they say last year, last year, they ranked 29th in the NFL in rushing yards allowed per attempt. And the Packers rushed for 6.2 yards per carry in week one. Only four teams had a higher average yards per rush uh, than the Vikings last week. And so really, the Eagles should be able to pound the run, which they do fantastic. I mean, they were like easily the number one rushing team in the NFL this past week or close to 
They had 215 yards on the ground, averaging 5.5 a carry. This is going to be a big, big storyline. They didn't want to run the football early against the Lions. I was screaming at the TV, like, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, and they waited a little bit and then started running. I'm going to see, or at least hope to see, a lot more Miles Sanders actually getting handoffs early on and not just Jalen Hurts having pass plays called where he then runs for first downs. Fine with that, not a problem with it. It's what Hurts does best, but they need to go ahead and run the football down the throats of the Minnesota Vikings because Everson Griffin and the pass rush they're really, really good coming on the outside and getting to the quarterback, uh, and that obviously can be slowed down if you run the football very well. Okay, problem number three, converting on third down. Yes, Minnesota did do a good job last week scoring, but they didn't score that many points. We're going to go through their numbers here in just one second. They were 2 for 10 on third downs in that game. 2 for 10. I mean, literally, before, well, before the fourth quarter, they were 2 for 10. I mean, this is not a game that you can go back and watch and be like, oh, Minnesota dominated all, all three phases. They had some really good moments, but it was a lot of blown coverages where the Viking, or the Packers were not even looking at Justin Jefferson that caused Minnesota to go ahead and win this football game. Philadelphia was great in, on third down last week, 9 for 14. I think they can 100% go ahead, uh, great on third down, 100% go ahead and you know uh, capitalize on this and hopefully be able to slow down uh, the Vikings on third down. Finally, scoring in, in the second half. Again, it was a tale of two halves. This this game that you go back, just go back and watch the film. You're here on YouTube right now. Finish this video. Drop a thumbs up. Drop a comment. Drop a like. You know, whatever. And then go watch the highlights because the highlights do show you that the Packers didn't just get rolled. The Packers defense was in this football game and it was mainly the Packer offense unable to score at all and two blown coverages of Justin Jefferson. That was basically it. Philadelphia has a very rare chance to go ahead and beat up on these guys, and I think that they can actually win this football game, maybe not comfortably, you know, by 14 points, but they should at least be very competitive and be in this in the fourth quarter. Again, look here at the ESPN stats from the game. Yes, it's 23-7. You got to remember, though, Aaron Rodgers and, and, and company had a fourth down and one in the red zone early on in this football game. They score there. This is at least 23-7. And then Christian Watson, I think it's Christian Watson, right? Yeah, Christian Watson, the rookie out of North Dakota State, had a wide-open touchdown pass early on in this football game. Could have been 23-21. Look through the numbers here. Yes, Kirk was 23 of 32 for two touchdowns, 277 yards. But overall, it was just Justin Jefferson. I mean, your next leading receiver was Adam Thielen, who only had three catches for 36 yards. If Philadelphia focuses solely in on Jefferson and makes other Vikings beat them, the Eagles can win this football game. Yes, you still have Dalvin Cook. Yes, he's still going to be a problem. Yes, Philadelphia got you know kind of waxed by DeAndre Swift last week, but Jefferson is the focus here. You slow down Justin Jefferson, you have a very real chance to go ahead and win this game. Now, Philadelphia obviously um, has some issues of their own, and Philadelphia obviously needs to go ahead and be careful about what they do when they play the Minnesota Vikings. I'm not going to say and sit back and say the Eagles are going to roll. Uh, Phillyvoice.com has a great write-up talking about what Philadelphia has to worry about. We'll throw it up on your screen right here. Number one, cornerbacks versus Justin Jefferson. I think you have to double Justin Jefferson the entire day. I mean, literally the entire day. And if Dalvin Cook's going to gash you, Dalvin Cook's going to gash you. But don't let Justin Jefferson, or worse, Jalen Rager, no, not going to happen, but still, don't let him beat you. Let Cook be the reason that he beat you. I want to see James Bradbury and Darius Slay earn their key. They're supposed to be some of the best cornerbacks, the two best cornerback tandems in the National Football League, or a top five cornerback tandem in the National Football League. Prove it, because Justin Jefferson is an absolute baller. He was out of his mind last week, and it was mainly because the Green Bay Packers didn't seem to really care about him. They were like, eh, Justin Jefferson, what is he? And then at the end, Aaron Rodgers said he was really good. So that's a big matchup. You also got to include Marcus Epps in this one because he's going to be one of the guys over top of Justin Jefferson. Big time to earn some respect from Eagle fans if Epps and Bradbury and Slay ball out on Monday. All right, next one here is very interesting. Eagles interior defensive line versus Vikings young offensive line. Yes, we already talked about this, but Philly voice is all over it. This is not a scary offensive line. You get the full lineup here. Uh, Darisaw, Cleveland, Bradbury, Ingram, and O'Neal. This is, you've got to get a big, big game from Jordan Davis. This offensive line tells me Jordan Davis should play a bunch. If they're running Dalvin Cook a lot, Jordan Davis needs to play a lot more than 22% of the snaps, which is what he played last week. So definitely uh, that is big time important. Finally, tackling versus Dalvin Cook. The tackling was pretty bad last week, and this isn't finally. There's one more here. Yeah, the, the, the tackling wasn't that good. They've got to be a lot better. And then, of course, the pass rushers. I said Everson Griffin earlier. I meant Danelle Hunter. Uh, they, were, they used to both be together, but Hunter's the one guy who actually still re uh, remains there. Hammonds and Darius Smith, the former Packer. Mylotta versus Johnson. I'm telling you, this is a great matchup just to show you how good Philadelphia can be. This is like the hardest game on the Eagles' schedule for like the next two months. It does not get difficult until you actually go ahead and play the Packers in like week 10. This is the matchup that's going to tell me if Philadelphia is legit 
early on. Now, if they lose, we can panic, we can freak out. We won't because it's only week two. But this is a great team. And this is a great chance to go, here's our best versus your best. Here's what we do well versus what you do well. I'm very excited to see what Philadelphia is going to go ahead and be able to do in this one. Because if they win this game and they look good doing it, the respect they're going to receive, I mean, league-wide is going to be incredible. So can Mylotta, Johnson, slow down the pass rushers? And can you slow down Justin Jefferson? You do that, and you can make Kirk throw, throw you some, some, some interceptions, and you might be able to run away, away with this game. Also, at the link under the lights, man, that's going to be a bunch of fun. Okay, quickly here, let's go ahead and throw you up some of the uh, the NFL games to also watch, which I'll be watching from Norway this weekend. Not a lot of crazy good ones. Browns, Jets, who cares? Big Lion fans on Sunday, let's beat up on Carson Wentz. That could be a lot of fun. Bucks, Saints, eh, we'll see what Brady looks like against you know a team that has a little bit better of an offense because Dallas wasn't able to score hardly anything. Giants, Panthers, like there isn't a lot of really important games happening this weekend. Patriots, Steelers, Colts, Jaguars, Dolphins, Ravens. Falcons, Rams, this Seahawk 49er one is going to tell us a lot, right? Is Seattle actually legit after their win against the Broncos, or was it just kind of like an overhyped, you know, 12th man win against Russ on Monday night? Likewise, is Trey Lance terrible? And what happens if Lance has a terrible game against Seattle? What if Lance is really continuing to complete 48% of his passes? How long do you ride Trey Lance with the rest of that team being stacked? I mean, you put a star quarterback on the Niners, this might be the best roster in the NFC. They're really good. If Lance keeps stinking, that's going to be a very big game where they can really start having some drama in 49er land. It'd be kind of fun to watch because I don't know if I'm a big Trey Lance fan. Uh, Bengals, Cowboys. If the Cowboys get smoked on Sunday afternoon on CBS, you know how much fun that that's going to be? I'm starting Joe Burrow, by the way. Uh, to me, Dallas is about to have a world of hurt. They could lose a lot of games before Dak Prescott comes back. We always root against the Cowboys. Seven and a half point underdogs, too. Ooh, that's tough. Texans, Broncos, Cardinals, Raiders is a very important matchup just to kind of, again, see if the Cardinals are bad or not, if they were just playing Kansas City last week. Very similar to the 49ers. This Kyler stuff is getting dramatic, and I know we get a new contract, but there's a lot of drama there uh, to, to keep an eye on. Packers should roll the Bears. The Bears being the uh, Niners, I, I, I think, was kind of a fluke, even though I talked about Trey Lance being bad. Kind of a fluke there, but that one's going to be interesting. Titans, Bills, eh, snoozer. But the big one being, of course, Vikings, Eagles, seeing what happens in Philadelphia uh, on Monday night. I can't wait for Lincoln Financial Field. Two-point favorites in that one. Again, I'm going to be up late. I don't know how I'm going to survive on, on what was it going to be, Tuesday uh, up there in Norway. I'm going to be so darn tired, but hopefully I'm a happy tired because Philadelphia would have won the football game. And again, I'm going to try to get you guys uh, you know, new episodes of the Thomas Mott Show, but just don't be like that guy who comments, where'd you go on my previous videos? Where are you at? Because that tells me you didn't watch this video all the way through where I explained to you where I was going to be. So hopefully the next video comes from Europe, so stay tuned for that one. Follow me on Twitter. Be sure to subscribe. Do all the fun things that you always should do here following the Thomas Mott Show. I appreciate each and every one of you. We will talk in, hopefully, a future video from Norway.